finished doing the year and welcome back to another video after about year of not uploading any new videos you might wonder why I haven't made any new videos well quite uh, if, if I put it short I haven't played guitar for almost a year now well now I have of course played but but I didn't play for almost a year and uh, due to several reasons I just frankly lost my motivation, all motivation to, to play play guitar and uh, I kind of didn't want to force it, and, uh, didn't want to force content uh, on this channel if I really didn't enjoy currently what I was doing. But uh, I think it was in June, uh, in the summer, in the, in the er early summer, I actually found my motivation again and I uh, started playing. I had um, two two practice sessions sessions with the guitar until I I went to play some uh, uh, soccer with my friends and uh, there was a little accident there I got tackled to the ground and I went down with this uh, this shoulder uh, front like I took the hit with the shoulder on the ground and this bone here this collar bone broke broke in half and uh, well I was quite lucky I was really lucky because if this would be the bone in some cases it's it breaks so violently that it can uh, dislocate like on top or below you know, the bone and every time it will need uh, surgery and uh, which means uh, longer recuperation time or healing time so but my bone was like this and it it went back to together really easily and no surgery was needed but it still took uh, six six to nine weeks to get it healed so that I could play guitar it was really nasty I just found my motivation I'm like yeah let's, let's let's play some guitar man and then I go play soccer and break the bone and go to hospital and I was like okay let's not play guitar man but now it's okay and I was lucky the hand is working perfectly it's moving everywhere everywhere there's no no pains or anything like that and uh, yeah seems to be pretty nice I would have probably started making videos already in the in the summer without without that accident but now everything is fine and we have a new video finally here so mm, about this video series or this video this is uh, the first part of a uh, three videos long series which are about bulerias uh, falsettas there's three three different bulerias falsettas and uh, they are all falsettas that are really saturated with uh, thumb related techniques 
And it's kind of nice because there's three falsetas that I'll, uh, use a lot uh, thumb related stuff. So I, I thought I'd bundle them together, and make a little tutorial series about it. And, um, and uh, yeah, I hope you like it. I have this bad tendency to start rambling about things and my, my thoughts get separated too much. So I, so I start to explain too specifically some things. So the video <laughs> at some points might be a little bit too long. It should be pretty nicely structured anyways. But I think the second video the, or the second falsetta when I get it out, it, it will be a bit better at least. But for your convenience, I have, uh, I, I will make uh, timestamps or I have made timestamps for you in the comment section. So check the first pinned comment. There's timestamps for everything you need to know. And um, in the end, uh, the end uh, of the video, I put a lot of uh, practice material in there. So just me playing with the metronome through the falsetta and on different speeds, like lower speed, a little bit faster, a little bit faster, like four or five different speeds. So you can actually go also there and you can even slow the video with the YouTube YouTube settings and you can hear the metronome there will be numbers indicated at, at where we are going in the in the in the compass so you can actually learn this falsetta without listening my rambling about what to do however i do recommend checking some of the specifics uh, like uh, about the alsapua part for example but all in all it should be a pretty nice source uh, to learn this falsetta. Unfortunately, tablatures are not available currently because this this falsetta, I don't even remember when I learned it. I had to relearn it now, now that I, <laughs> I had to relearn a lot of stuff because I had forgotten so much that I used to remember by, by muscle memory and, and just just memory. The, the metronome section will help. Uh, you can check slowly slowly how it goes and uh, the rhythm rhythm is the, is the really important part here and thank you thank you viewers thank you subscribers thank you for all the comments i haven't uploaded in a year any videos and still the channel has been growing slowly and steadily and we have indeed surpassed the 1000 subscribers mark so uh, i hope you enjoy the video my friend is coming <laughs> all righty then let's start from the very be beginning beginning <laughs> from the very beginning here and uh, i'll just play through one uh, full cycle of the compass from the start and it goes like this six seven eight nine ten eleven and let's break it down a little bit so like I told you before once you memorize this one cycle you've almost learned a third of the whole falsetta already of course, there's a little bit uh, technically tougher stuff in the in the end, like the Alsa Pua, but they can be tackled with with a uh, decent practice. But back to the back, back to the beginning here. Uh, so, how do you play this? So you start with this chord, and uh, you start with a thumb and uh, golpe at the same time. So this and this is the 12 here. 12, 12, 1, 12, 1. <clears throat> and uh, actually maybe it's easier if I, yeah. If I break it down like this. Yeah, so first, First, you play these three notes, start, uh, starting with a gol golpe as well, like this. Then you hold the chord, 
and uh, pick the eighth fret of the uh, fifth string with your little finger here. So you have, and then you go here, but you play like. And after this, you release your little finger. But you do a little al sapua here. So you play these three strings. Like this. And, uh, and right after the al sapua, you do... So you play this note again after the short al so. and all this time you hold the same chord but visit here with the little finger and the important thing here is to note that once you uh, pick this this uh, note here with your little finger you have to shorten the note a little bit and uh, if I didn't it would sound like this but if I shorten it it has this di di this little rhythmic uh, rhythmic uh, detail in there So now we are uh, this far already, and after this, and here you play it two times again, and again with this note, you have to shorten shorten the first first note a little bit. So let's take it from the beginning. And from here, when you, once you take the second note, you, you slide two frets lower. So. And this slide here, uh, when it hits uh, the, two, uh, the, the, the fret two... <laughs> fuck! <sighs> when, when you land the slide two frets lower, uh, that's that in the, in the rhythm that's six. So basically, if you start from here, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And yeah, after six, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. You only need to fill this and uh, do the gold on the accents. That's that's pretty man mandatory or well basic uh, basic stuff in glorious six seven eight nine ten eleven and then you can start again so now you can basically loop this first uh, first uh, cycle of the compass pretty easily and practice it really effectively so now we can have a little so if we would to loop this cycle here and you would count six seven eight nine ten eleven proceed uh, forward so so after this seven, uh, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 
you do the uh, exactly the same thing as as in the beginning but from here so we started from here and then we go here so basically So it, these two two cycles in the beginning are perfectly identical but if if you want you can add some flavor here and there so if you, if you for example when you come from and you start the second cycle you could add a little rasgia there for example This rasgia is really useful, the index up, uh, ring finger down, index down, index up, ring finger down, index down. Uh, a lot to use, for example, here. And so forth. But the thing here, for example, a little bit flavor. Ten, you could do ten, eleven, ten, eleven, one, two, and so forth. So those are things you can do to add add some flavor. Well, not the only things, but just an example. And now we can go forward from uh, here. So six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and again. We repeat the same thing as in the beginning, but from here. And the only difference here really is that instead of a slide, like from... We go... So, you have this. Right after this, this fingering is uh, is important as well. So, so instead of, of uh, taking this with a uh, index finger, for example, you use the middle finger that's closer here. So. Basically, this pull off here is the same thing as the as the slide. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eight, eleven. And now you have three full cycles here that uh, are somewhat similar. So if we take all of them uh, now from the beginning, uh, the first one is. Second one, third one. Okay, now we are quite far actually already. And from here, six, seven. Let's break this down a little bit. You have your index here and your middle finger here. So fifth and sixth strings, first fret. And you use your gulp here and uh, you play three strings like this and then you go up one fret on the sixth string here and you take it like this so yeah 
and from here this is a similar pattern here Timing here is really crucial. So, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, whoops. 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, this whole legato here lands on the, for the 6 here. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 6, 7. Second cycle after uh, the, the next cycle after is basically the same, but instead of playing uh, three notes and two notes, you play only three notes together and then only single notes in the between. So let's have a comparison here. That's fairly simple, uh, not even the fingers don't need to be uh, explained that much. Well, okay, this, this one is needs a little bit of explanation. Uh, taking the A major chord with this little uh, extra technique here, and this has a lot of benefits. Because, uh, maybe you can see from this camera better. It is zoomed in, so <laughs> it's a little bit hard. Yeah, let's just use this one here. But as you can see, many times the A major is taken like this. And you can you can use that, and sometimes it's actually uh, even better better for some some situations. But most of the time, especially in bulerias and solea por buleria and, 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 and many, many other things, it is really useful to learn to take, uh, take this chord with this kind of way that you, uh, you use your index finger, uh, this part, uh, this part of the finger, you uh, 
make a little bar here and then you finish the chord uh, from from, uh, from 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 below here with your middle finger so this leaves your uh, ring finger but also your little finger free and it also makes transitions to other chords easier for example this this bar here has many benefits uh, so I, I I'm telling you learn it you better learn both ways how, how to take chords differently okay so let's continue uh, where we were where we were we were here What happens there? So, up, so you are here. Seven, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So, what happens here? You take this chord on the third fret with uh, your middle finger, ring finger, and your little finger, and you do uh, alza pua with these strings. Start starting with the gold pass well again, but then you play this note here after the alt one. Okay, and so you just Take your index finger here and have a pull off there. Okay, and after this pull off, you play the A string. Take a hammer on, it's a ligado or hammer on, with your index finger and your middle finger here. So let's uh, take it from the beginning. And also, I've been practicing this lately, but it is still quite hard to play and to actually count uh, at the same time. To count, uh, I mean, I've been, of course, using my, my feet always as a, when practicing different compass, but, but actually saying the rhythm aloud while you do it is actually quite challenging. And... Uh, but it really helps you uh, helps you to develop your uh, sense of rhythm. So uh, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And from here. You take a, a part of a C chord. And again you start with a al zapua and a, and a golpe with it. So and then again just like before you play the same note you start the al zapua with two times. Let's let's have them in two separate uh, 
separate things here. So if you memorize this, and right after that comes. So as you have this part of the C chord, you play it like this. After this pull off here, there's another alza pua here. So okay, and after this. sixth string with your ring finger. Okay. And here you have so you play this note and then a three fifth string and you hammer it with the first fret. And then you play the third fret of the fifth string and you take it with your uh, little finger here. So now we have and that's basically again one cycle. metronome a little bit. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. fret, second and third string with your little finger and your ring finger here. And then the next cycle starts like this. You have this chord and you play these strings. So uh, strings uh, four, three and two. And you play them with a golpe and an alzapua. Okay? And then you do this. Okay? So you have And the second time you do it, and this is important again. So 
once you do the pull off here, and go to the A major. So you do six, seven, eight, nine, and then after nine, you you land you, you land this rasgel on the ten, but you also take your ring finger and play like this. And then you basically start again uh, from here. And this is exactly the same as, be as, as before. And then comes the last cycle. Last cycle of the, the, the whole falsetta. So that is a... Uh, the hardest part probably because it's the alza pua but it starts on 12 and I'll just break it down to you but basically it's a uh, right uh, if I so that's how the falsetta ends so let's break it down here. The so you end up here just before the the last cycle. So from here the transition, you move these fingers into this position, which is this chord. Basically, you just have to learn to use this uh, index and the middle finger, and you need to be able to. Uh, there's a reasoning, I'll explain this soon, but the fingering here for the alza pua. So, uh, when you have the chord here, you take the fourth fret of the fifth string with your middle finger here. So. Uh, it looks like this and the difficult here difficult part here is that in the beginning when you don't know how to do it properly uh, your fingers here will start to slide towards the fourth uh, fourth fret because of this little uh, extend uh, like extending your hand like this but there's a legit reason why it is done like this and not like you, you could of course you could finger it like uh, for example like this so then then you would use uh, these fingers but it's not actually advisable here because this this way of uh, fingering for this particular part is being used in many many different other places and this fingering helps you to learn other stuff uh, easier uh, and uh, this, the reason why it is fingered like this is because uh, it is in the long run the better better way to do it and the way to do it you, you basically normally you 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 have your thumb usually in the middle and lower but not not here and not showing not showing uh, above the the fretboard and not even uh, not even this this technique it doesn't need to but the most important thing even even though this looks from the camera that my wrist would be really uh, weird but it's actually not because if I take my hand off and, and show you the wrist you can see that it's actually not in a weird position here so if you if you play uh, this, this part it only goes to this extensive position for a little while 
and you learn to do it so that it doesn't uh, twist your uh, wrist too much. And the point is, you are not doing this position all the all the time, and you are only doing it in certain spots. But it is a more efficient way to go about it in the long run. And, uh, and, and for example, uh, it is used for example in uh, in one particular part from uh, Sepa Andalusa by Pagada Lucia. Uh, there's a part where this fingering actually is like the only option, almost. Uh, if you know. Uh, song uh, it forces you to uh, go here for a little while there's a hammer on right away and you right away you have to go here as well so having these here all the time helps you a lot because you only visit here just quickly in the beginning but it makes all of the rest so much easier so that's that's one reason why you should also in this falsetto I am now teaching okay so now let's go into detail here so we'll start with that gold and Again, this pull off again is the six, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So twelve, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Supplies is not uh, developed enough. Just go about it really slowly. Have uh, have all your attention towards relaxed position, relaxed playing, and uh, relaxing your all, all all your posture so that you are in a good form and don't don't push the speed if if you feel there's tension anywhere. So the more relaxed you learn to play the better you start to play I've noticed noticed it uh, the hard way I would say so let's take it a few times here. And the important part here is also that this here that your your fingers are just resting here they are just resting there and you are not pulling them you are not holding them you are not anchoring your your hand anywhere so if, if you play play an alza pua and uh, you you need to have accuracy they are only there just to guide you through but not you don't force anything so they are just chilling there you can also practice uh, there's many different ways uh, to practice the relaxed position I don't know if I'm gonna make any any technique related tutorials maybe maybe now that I actually have a correct posture and correct positions maybe then maybe then it is a viable thing to do because in my old videos oh dear lord so so bad posture so bad so bad it felt so bad just watching them my my, my wrist being like this <laughs> all the time no wonder why 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 my tendons got got hurt but anyway let's say let's take the 
last part with a the algebra part with this metronome as well. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. <laughs> if we recap everything for the end uh, with the metronome of course let's put it a little bit faster but it's good to like uh, have a little recap here I'll try to edit some of the not necessary rambling out but I'll, or, or just use a uh, timestamps for the comments so you guys can navigate the video a little bit easier it just <laughs> took a lot longer than I thought to record this uh, expl explanatory part okay so 6 7 8 9 10 11 <laughs> is acting up so well, that was the third one I know the fourth one the whole whole crap together and uh, I hope you enjoyed the video I hope you are able to actually learn it from this video <laughs> uh, it's a little bit different than I thought I thought it would be so simple to just explain but it was a little bit more complicated than I thought but I hope the extra training section uh, the extra extras will help you will help you practice this better because uh, can just slow down or or fast forward the video and uh, try to check check all the specifics because specifics from there
Thank you.